Hi everybody, I'm Shah from Charlie's Angel Tarot uh, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. I've got another surprise. I've got the Avalonian Oracle. Let's have a look what this looks like. And thanks again to Shiva from the publishers, Red Feather, I am allowed to do a review. I feel really <laughs> overwhelmed that they think I'm alright in doing reviews and I enjoy doing reviews. The last deck, uh, that was amazing as well. But now we've got the Avalonian Oracle. So let's have a look. The Avalonian Oracle. Uh, spiritual Wisdom from the Holy Isle. Jaina Telindru, illustrated by Emily Bruna. Brunner. And I love the way it's done with these natural chamomile flowers. And that is what it looks like on the side. It's got an inscription. An enchanting addition to the world of Celtic and Avalonian law, as well as to the Divinition community as a whole. The art has been quite powerful that pulls you into the timeless realm of Avalon. The seven unique card cycles allow for deep journeys, but each card also stands on its own as a simple moment of wisdom. The sacred feminine is truly felt throughout this lovely deck. And that was by Lunea Weatherston, author of Tending Bridget's Flame, the Victorian Fairy Tarot and the Mystical Cat's Tarot. So that is awesome. So it's already been reviewed by certain people. And it's a 46 card oracle and guidebook inspired legends of Avalon from British myth and Arthurian tradition. Receive personal insight and transformal guidance as you explore the way of the Celtic priestess. Answer Avalon's, Avalon's call, but discover the priestess path within. That's what it says on the side. So, they've used the sides to really describe the deck already. And then at the bottom it says, Never before have the goddesses of Britain been so creatively, lovingly and delightfully brought to life with dedication, love and incredible atten attention to detail. This is not just an oracle, but a valuable tool that will deepen your relationship with Divine Feminine. Christopher Hughes, head of the um, Anglaise Druid Order, Mountain Hemus scholar and author of The Cauldron Born and the, um, the Book of the Celtic Magic. So this is really for pagans, witches, anybody that loves King Arthur um, or the Lady of the Lake with the sword because that's what is depicted on the front. I hope you can see that. I might have to just adjust the light. Again, it is really, really hot here. So there you are. You can see it. The Lady of the Lake. If I really... It's like... Um, if it's got ultra lights on the the deck, so it's magic. It is magic, literally. So, so and um, it's got a little white ribbon to open it up again, and it's magnetized. It's really strong magnets, and this is what it looks on the inside. I will read that to you in a minute. And this is the book, and that is the. 
box and we've got the book it's black and white all the cards are black and white and we'll go through the book Avalonian Oracle I'll just do it on back to front and I'll try to do as much upside down we've got the publishers and all the uh, rules and regulations here and this work hopes to conquer all seekers of the Holy Isle those who walk walked this path before us those who walked this path beside us and those who will walk this path after us that is dedicated okay, dedication and then we've got the acknowledgments and they've sort of got the old-fashioned Celtic Celtic letters here and that's quite nice but it's not easy to read so um, you will have to excuse me we've got the introduction then we've got the chapter one cycle one the five seeds of wisdom and I th might be the card number so we'll have to see when we open the cards because it's 20 seed one calling the barge 21 uh, seed two Parting the mists. 22. Seed 3. Retrieving the sword. 23. Seed 4. Reaching the sword. 24. Seed 5. Reclaiming the isle. So, I think it's describing all the... the <coughs> yes, it's at the... I've looked at the deck. And seed 1 is card 1 and that is calling the barge that's what you see at the bottom the cards aren't numbered that is the backing of the cards so it's really beautiful so um, I don't have to go through chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 but um, the chapter 2 is the Avalonian cycle of healing then we have um, chapter 3 the cycle 3 is the goddess of Avalon cycle 4 is right chapter 4 that is the 13 moons of Avalon chapter 5 or cycle 5 the 9 Morgans then um, we have cycle 6 chapter 6 the 3 realms sky land and sea <coughs> then we have chapter 7 or cycle 7 the um, sil Silic Journey then we've got the Definition and Transformation Chapter 8 and then we've got the Bibliography and then we've got here we start with the Introduction and the Structure of the Deck the Evalonian Oracle is comprised of seven cards divisions representing different phases of the spiritual journey and echoing the seven circuits of the walkable three-dimensional lab lab labyrinth carved into the slopes of Glastonbury Tall Glastonbury is South England is in Glastonbury in southern, southern England holds powerful associations with the Isle of Avalon and the Tor is a sacred hill that may have been a ritual center in the p times past like the undulations of the Limbreth the seven cycles of the deck integrate seemingly with each other to form a cohesive whole there are 46 cards in all, broken up into seven subcategories. These are, <coughs> excuse me, cycle one, the five seeds of wisdom, and then we go into the chapters. Right. So I've already uh, read the uh, chapters, and uh, uh, again, it is. This is really nice. Separately, nicely present presented. 
and I'll, I'll show you from one to eight and then we have the sight and synchronicity and this explains that the priestess of Evelon like the other um, Celtic holy women who lived in the enclaved secluded on the Isles it just goes into the history a little bit of um, what the the priestess of Avalon is and also um, about the sight and the paranormal ability belonging only to the powerful psychics and passed down through the generations rather it is ability to recognize energetic p patterns and from them discern the detail of the greater tapestry and the greater in, in, the, in the big all picture and then we've got the synchronicity um, when doing a reading with this or any other oracle <coughs> not only are we looking at the symbols at as they present themselves but we are seeking the patterns that are revealed by the cards it can be useful to do an inventory of the cards after you have laid them out to see how they relate to each other noting how many are from the same division subdivision of the deck for example acknowledging the number of the cards that describe a particular element aligned perhaps there are cards that allow that always show up in a personal reading or ones that never seem to turn over these are each important pieces of the greater puzzle the greater picture the whole that is the whole that is the reading and yet it is your inner wisdom that in the end helps you to interpret it, the cards before you while it can be helpful to have a book to get you started down the path using any divinatory system it is important to keep in mind that the layers of meaning embedded in any symbol are greater than can be recorded in any one work at this deck or any other deck that you use is simply a tool through which the universe can communicate its pattern to you your personal experiences of the symbols depict in the, the cards are just a val uh, as valid as perhaps even some important to you your process as any inter interpretations you might read in this or any other book this empowering perspective that your personal wisdom is the keystone of your spiritual sovereignty is the foundation of the Avalonian tradition and its philosoph philosophy so in other words the, the cards or any other cards that you use are of help but it is your intuition and your life experience etc etc anything that you get through from the other side and from the cards and from your intuition that is of importance so it's great that they can work together that's what they're saying and that's the way I interpret it here it goes into the five steps of wisdom the stages of the priestess journey here depicted as a pathway to Avalon is a reflection of the unfolding of the soul's inner wisdom the seeds that lie in the heart of the of the peep uh, of the apple uh, the very fruit that uh, of that wisdom we begin the process by calling the barge by speaking the shores of Avalon the island of healing and wholeness next we embark upon the journey over the waters of the unconscious that inward path that leads us to the core of the true self but first we must part the mists to see beyond the illusions we hold about ourselves and the world in order to obtain clarity and discernment 
we need to successfully complete the journey. Once we have done so, we are able to retrieve the sword of clear sight and personal sovereignty, and thus empowered, we are able to make choices that are reflections of that which is truly before us, rather than reacting to situations that are coloured by our fears for the future or our wounds from the past. At least we reach the shore, the blessed isle which produces everything it needs in and of itself we are able to meet our own needs physically and mentally, emotionally and spiritually and are fully conscious of our own self-worth. Finally we are able to reclaim the isle, to fully integrate all of our growth experiences in the whole of who and what we are, remembering at last that we are the whole and holy and fully connected to the shore and I then it goes into the meanings of every single um, card or um, as they call it seed and it's black and white and I in every chapter they have this page I think yes and this is the explaining Every chapter is explained and what the journey uh, is for that seed, for the, that suit. Let me put it that way. Th so I will be going back as soon as I uh, will go get to the cards in a minute. And every time we come to a seed or a chapter, and then I'll just... Uh, do that for you. Read that. Um, let's have a look. Definition, transformation. Okay, that's in chapter 8. So in chapter 8, I'll try to put it into clearer English. A single card draw, the Avalonian cycle healing spread. So the cycle of the sun insight into the year to come. Then we've got the cycle of the moon insight into a month to come. The cycle of self insight into your personal process. And Avalon healing sp spread is a the five card spread. That's the one I usually use for the week. And then it goes into what each card means. Then you have the um, this is a win spread, the a win spread, or the healing spread. No, a win. Avalonian cycle, the moon. The Awen spread provides insight and an illumination into <coughs> creative process whether you are seeking to physically manifest a project, dream, goal or looking to catalyze spiritual transformation in your life. The divine inspiration called Awen in Welsh and Imbas of in Gaelic is the stream of energy that was sought by Celtic beards and poets. It allowed them to create moving a prophetic song and verse, and was believed to be gifted to them by the gods in Welsh tradition. Sheridwin is the mother of the beards, and she bestows Ewan from her cauldron <coughs> of wisdom and inspiration. She birthed Talis Tillison, the greatest of all British beards, whose very name, meaning radiant <coughs> brow, indicated the he possessed the fire in the head, the mark of being embedded um, with the light of Awen. I love this. The source 
the silver ray, the crystal ray and the golden ray so this is, I love this, this is like uh, Wiccan, uh, a Wiccan reading and, and I love the way she's done this um, made it her own because these are just normal spreads but she's um, put a story into it and, and intertwined the history, the culture of the pagans and also the the law keeper, the law keeper, emissary, uh, artisan, half keeper, guardian, seer, healer and ritualist and, and just goes, ex it also explains to you what type of spread, this is the ninth uh, uh, card spread what each card means and I'll just show you there and it's all the cards are explained I love it, I really think, think it's unique the three realm spread the realm, the sky, the land and the sea I love it and of course it explains it here and then you have the mirrors spread and then you've got different spreads the three cauldron spread I love it even although I'm not a witch I love this most probably because I grew up in England and the old fashioned um, or rather the traditional ways the Gaelic um, that's yeah I call that more or less like the native uh, Indians in America uh, the natives from America or Canada or uh, uh, Australia, Maoris and the Aborigines from Australia. Well, this is what I feel like um, are the natives of the British Isles. Okay, I love it. I love everything about the Viking and King Arthur. It brings it really to life. And I don't, what is in a name? You know, witches are the prototypes to the healing. And we all discussed this in the uh, Wendy and I in our witches series, and it is just beautiful, natural healers. Now, I wasn't finished with the box, and I started already with the um, book. Now we've got the uh, Ma Celtic Studies, and that is by Jaina uh, Talandro. I'm sorry I don't speak Welsh but um, this I think her name is Gaelic and Emily Brunner is the artist designer whose work often deals with mythology magic uh, dreams and surreal etc etc and then we've got the author Jaina Tylandru illustrated by Emily Brunner okay the Celtic studies she was Ma Celtic Studies is an author, priestess and the founder of the Sisterhood of Avalon. She facilitates pilgrimages to Great Britain and Ireland and her published works include Avalon with In, a sacred journey of myth, mystery and inner wisdom, a professional tarot counsellor since 19... 93 Jaina's study of Western tradition and a transpersonal psychologically creates a synergy that she feels enhances her connection to the tarot as an oracle of the spirit. I think it's beautiful. And I love the way Shiva makes the these boxes look like books so you can actually really literally put them in a bookcase and it doesn't look hickledy pickledy with big decks small decks no they're all the same size and they're nice beautiful okay so let's dive into the um, cards I'm really a bit excited with all this Ah, it's like we've got the Lady of the Lake here. We've got the Calling of the Barge. Calling of the Barge. There's the Not Numbered. And this will take a while because 
I don't know what the calling of the barge is either. You really will have to go uh, back to um, um, the book because what you have is you've got the card description, then you've got keywords, then you've got the quest and the divin uh, divinary meaning. So this is a really a deck that you have to study. The cards uh, description, then the keywords, the quest, and the divinary meaning. Now I'll do the what first card. Um, a white garbed pilgrim stands in the muted light of dusk on the shore of the misty lake. She holds the silver, bra uh, silver branch of the apple branch hung with nine silver bells representing the call to the journey and shades it nine times allowing the sound to be absorbed into the expectant air. The lazy outline of the barge can be seen through the veil of the mist. There. I hope you can see it. It's glossy and, and the cardstock is really sturdy. I'll just read this because otherwise the video will be much too long. I would love to do is I can do a series if you like. So let me know if you want to see more and that I read each card. Okay, and then the keywords is initiation, new beginnings, facing the unknowing, trusting the process, speaking your needs, starting down a new path, looking within, seeking truth, catalyzing growth, attracting life altering experiences, embarking upon a new journey, stepping into the unknown. Those are the keywords. Then we have the quest, leaving behind that which is known and familiar. We are called to look deeper into the nature of the self and to explore the boundless waters of our soul seeking to map out this fantastical seascape of possibilities. We will discover the truth of who we are and the potential of all that our lives may be. The first step into the unknown can be the journey of the authentic self. In one is one that will see you supported by the universe every step of the way. Ask for what you need. Focus your intention and energy upon your ultimate goal and the way will be made clear for you, even if the challenges seem surmountable from your point of departure. This is truly just the beginning and it is in meeting the challenges along your way that we discover what it is we are truly made from and where it is we are supposed to go so that is really beautiful that's a l and then you've got the divinity meaning when you draw this card you are called to seek out and embrace the part of yourself that hungers to become what actualized that strains against the g again chains of resistance endlessly yearning to be set free. The first step of the journey to personal sovereignty is to speak your need to the universe and to name that which you seek to accomplish. This is an act of great courage and its importance cannot be overstated. Follow the ur urgings of the spirit, trust your intuition and ask for what you need, both from situations you are in as well as people in your life. Listen to the inner voice that calls you to embark upon a new leg of your journey's life. Life's journey, sorry. Although you may not see it from the present vantage point, trust that the universe is at work in your life. Beautiful and 
I uh, now we're going to the paths the mists parting the mists mm. I'm going to use these in my weekly reading I want to get to know these these cards and uh, this is the lady of the lake that you're seeing and that's the l that is the myth mythical story and that is retrieving the sword truth balance justice clear sight revelation renewal sovereignty then we've got reaching the shores I love the drawings on these uh, I saw the photo and I thought no no but this is really beautiful and it even these little that's the lady of the lake then we've got the boat this one we've got like a warrior or no a man with open arms the druid and here we've got trees the apple tree they are going on about <coughs> reaching the shores attainment wisdom victory fulfillment manifestation abundance cycles sacred center then we'll go to the reclaiming the island Ooh, that's beautiful that's a whole story in itself keywords unity being cla uh, being clarity big picture sharpened perspective sacred center eliminate li limin that's a different word liminality bridging the worlds integrate integration sovereignty attaining goal goals gr growth and then we go to chapter two so we're coming to the chapter two cycle two I'll just move away so that you can see and I can see the Avalon cycle of healing I love these cards they feel earthy so this is station of descent station of descent descent the unconscious healing cleansing releasing waning blood mysteries the other world wisdom threshold place entering the cauldron of transformation and this one is a very dark one let's have a look it's like um, if you've been to I haven't been to Glastonbury because I but I've seen pictures you see the mountain in the back and then you see a martello tower on top of it and like this is you can see that here but I don't know whether you can see that little spot there and that's the martello tower or the castle that's on the mountain of Glastonbury and I've got the tree there with the center I won't go into what the the uh, the center in the of the tree means but it, the key words are shadow root stillness nadir dark night of the soul depths of the cauldron death and rebirth now I did say I would read this so the Evolonian cycle of healing inspired by the rhythms of nature as well as the mythic cycles and seasonal ritual calendar of the Celtic Britons the Avalonian cycle of healing is psycho spiritual pedigree of the inner growth and the road map to personal transformation the fundamental pr uh, premise of the cycle of healing is the idea that we are called to embrace or our connection to the energy of the cycle which is prime mover of the universe in order to as Joseph Campbell so aptly put in 
match our net nature with nature. I wish more people did that. Once we acknowledge that we are part of the universe and not apart from it, we can consciously come consciously come into alignment with the energies of the great cycle whose repetitions are seen in tiniest sub subatomic particles through the great whirling galaxies that make the make up the known universe from the turning of the seasons to the faces of the moon the avalonian cycle of healing teaches us to look at the progression of change in the world around us in more than a symbolic way, giving us the tools we need to tap into the greater movement of the cycle and channel. It's so that it is the battery that powers our inner work. We enter into the depth of the un unconscious to seek out n negative life paths and the station of descent. Look into the mirror of our souls, shadow at the station of confrontation. Bring the reclaimed energies from our hidden selves up into the light of consciousness at the station of emergence and redirect these energies to cultivate and harvest of self activity uh, actualization at the apex of the cycle that is in the station of resolution a spiritual harvest that assists us to clear our sight and bolster our resolve to the cycle turns down into the station of descent once more the station of integration is the heart around which this perpetual cycle turns while always existing in between each of the other stations. It holds the energies of wholeness and unity and assists us to incide the big picture of our soul's growth and spiritual unfolding. So that's beautiful. So in other words, it's making, bringing, uh, we have to look within us ourselves and um, bring the dark dark thoughts, dark negativity out into the light and say forgive them and work through them, forgive them and let go. I think it's a beautiful the way beautifully explained. Then we have the sta a station of emergence. The station of emergence and the keywords. I don't see any keywords. Um, I do s oh, hear the keywords new beginnings, fertility, creativity, possibility, potential, transformation, cleansing, renewal, and partnerships. And then you've got the quest, the divinary meaning extensively, and you've got an affirmation. The affirmation that goes with this card I'm open to all possibilities. I create life I wish to have with joy and abundance and the universe supports the vision of my authenticity with each breath I recreate I recreate myself anew I see with clarity act with courage and life or live from my center of sovereignty I'm a reflection of the divine at work in this world and that is beautiful then the station of resolution and I think if I see the card like this that will be most probably harvesting time okay the keywords revelation fruit full fruit victory accomplishment first harvest abundance passion will I love it Then we have station of integration. So you're integrating your light side with your dark side. Ooh, bringing it to one and bringing it to the daylight. That's what I think. And let's have a look at the keywords. The whole. The all. The core. The heart. The self. 
the big picture. Yes, bringing them together. Beautiful. And then we go um, it <coughs> go to chapter 3, the goddess of Avalon. And there she is. The goddess of Avalon, chapter 3. I think I'll have to do this in two sections. Chapter 3, the goddess of Avalon. There are five goddesses honored in the Avalonian tradition. The stories of these Brythonic or Celtic British divi divinities are preserved in early and middle Welsh literature and poetry, where they appear as other worldly women, powerful sorcerers of great queens, or great queens, sorry. The tales of Rion, Brenwyn, Lodwed, and Arian Hod can be found in the four branches of Megbinogi or the Mabinoglian. I suppose that is a mythic. This mythic cycle was written down in the 11th or 12th century E.C. after Christ, um, but are believed to have originated in oral tradition. Uh, which could indicate that the stories are of an older potential pagan heritage. The myth of the Zerdwin is told in the story Haynes Tallison, the tales of Taliesin, uh, uh, are also called the tale of Gwynberg, a Middle Welsh tale often called with another story collected with other stories to have become associated with the Mebing <laughs> um, although not a part of the four branches proper, although these texts do not explicitly state that these figures are goddesses, they are many contextual clues as well as similarities with deities from other Celtic cultures, which hint at their original divinity. As we read these stories and reclaim the layers of symbolism that point to the mm, true nature of the extraordinary women, we also learn to reclaim the inherent divinity that dwells within us, each of us. Right. Now, this is Keywords for this is she is a Rayonon, she's the goddess or the, the powerful lady. A Rayon, beautiful. I'm sure you say it differently, but she's a, a sovereignty, right action, authenticity, fertility, abundance, trust, patience, balance, nurturing, compassion, understanding, perseverance communication and inner strength. Looks a bit like the moon goddess. <laughs> okay, then we go to Serdwin. Serdwin. And she's a pagan lady, but she's music, farmer. Beautiful. The little piglet, and she is horses or the ponies that dwell in the Welsh hills the wild ponies in Wales Serdwin is seated on a throne carved from prisly blue stone okay well did did I see that this is clearer but this she's got the cauldron um, I thought she was standing, but never mind. Apparently, she's seated, and she wears the silver torque 
of sovereignty. She's depicted in her crone aspect, and beneath her black hooded cloak, we can see her white hair, pale skin, and piercing dark eyes. Well, I'm just going to give you the keywords. Wisdom, creativity, inspiration, death and rebirth. Shape-shifting, change, release, uh, shading, manifesting, confronting the shadows, balance of higher and lower selves, mastery. Then we get bloodwit. Bloodwit. Renewal, rebirth, sovereignty, choice, clarity, fertility, passion, partnership, right action, casting off the expectations of others, being true to the self, piercing through illusions, acknowledging personal truth. And then we've got Arian. She's beautiful. Oh, I love the bracelets. It's like she's spinning, um, spinning, um, oh, lace, making lace. Lessons, cycles, time, bound and rebound, ties, moons, faces, um, patterns, sovereignty, self-sufficient, challenges, action, sudden change, manifestation, becoming who we were meant to be. Then we got Brenwin, Brenwin. And she's on the peak, she's thrown on the peak of uh, the highest point in all ways. That's Mount Snowden. Okay, unconditional love. Big picture, asking for what we need. Problem solving, clear perspective, communication. Relationship between higher and lower self. Fighting for what is right, sorrow, compassion, loss, self-reflecting, sovereignty, union of opposites above and below, heart the, of the center. Right. And she's got a white crow. It doesn't look like a, um, um, what you call it? They do exist, white crows. At least, I think so. Well, I'm going to stop this uh, here because we are at chapter 4 and I'm going to make this into a two-part video because otherwise it will be too long to load up. So, if you've enjoyed this so far, then please join us in the second section. Okay, see you there. Thank you.